Hey everyone, so we're continuing down um, the line here with our Rift of Chaos series. So I did Earth and Water before the second round of nerfs, and I was waiting to do the Fire one before the second round. Um, so we're going to talk about the mechanics of the boss. I'll show you, you know, the teams I'm using and things like that. And then, uh, you know, we'll just we'll just talk about, you know, these Rift of Chaos again. Um, so. The nerf to these bosses, I think, was good enough in order for people to be able to do stages one through three. You know, um, you know, <laughs> the the issues with these uh, dungeons continue to be the same. You need specific heroes. Uh, the mechanics are not good, in my opinion. They they make uh, the gameplay really limited, which doesn't allow you a whole lot of uh, variability. So that has not changed. But if you did have specific heroes, uh, there are some teams out there that the community has come up with where you should be able to take part and get at least a couple of these relics here and there um, to help progress in other areas of the game. And that's kind of how I'm just handling this. Right now, I'm not too jazzed up about needing to progress in this. I don't have the desire to get to stage 12 and be the first one and show you my comp and blah 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 i'm just farming what i can if i end up being able to progress if somebody comes up with something cool in the community that's great um but my main focus continues to be rta i just really enjoy that game mode stuff like this doesn't interest me um so it is what it is as they say so the fire boss uh let's talk about his mechanics does share similar things uh to the earth and water boss so they all do this huge aoe now the earth boss and the water boss you can reduce the damage of this by uh, putting up negative effects on them this boss does not have that so he just does really big damage now the unique thing about this fire boss is at the beginning of uh the battle he actually sacrifices half of his health um he does this to gain crit damage and then also make himself immune to poison, plague, and max health-based damage. This is really important because uh, the earth and water boss can actually uh, have these things used against them. So that uh, this is definitely different for the fire boss, but obviously you only have half of his health, and he doesn't have like... <laughs> 12 health bars or anything like that he's just really really tanky um and he hits really really hard so this is something unique about him another thing that is kind of unique but shares the same uh or similar mechanics to the earth and uh, water boss is the earth boss does an end of turn aoe or start of the turn aoe um, the water boss also does a start or the end of the turn AOE and does freeze. This one uh, just does ignite. And it can't be resisted where I believe the water boss can be resisted. So similar mechanics there. The ignite, uh, I, I would say, doesn't play uh, into the, you know, the scheme too much. Uh, but it is there, so if, you, if your team gets down too low, you know, this could end up, you know, procking and, and killing you. Uh, as always, uh, they all share that similar counterattack mechanic, so you definitely want to go before the boss. Uh, the speed, you know, for for stages 1 through 3, I think is like 180 to 190, somewhere around there. I know it's not the easiest thing to achieve, but it is endgame content. You know, some of the dungeons, even, you know, uh, like Witch of the Wind, you need 220 speed or something like that, 200 plus speed for your damage dealer. So I, I do think the 180 to 190 is fair. I think some people would disagree with me, but I think it's okay for, for those beginning stages. Um, so you definitely want to be in front of that counterattack. And then also it shares the same kind of uh, mechanic with this attacking the highest health person and this does need to play into your strategy and then also they do put up stun bombs uh, where if they go off if you don't cleanse them they will kill your entire team so 
Almost everything is identical with this boss other than the fact that he starts at 50% health and he's a little bit tankier and he puts ignites. So they're all basically the same thing. You just need to have uh, heroes in the correct element in order to deal with it, right? So there are a couple ways to go about this stage. One is a really tanky version, right? Which is with somebody like Jonathan, Hakrin, and Blackhorn, um, which if you're going the tanky route, you really need Blackhorn. You don't have another option, in my opinion. Um, these three are kind of non-negotiable in this instance. Uh, so for the tanky comp, that's, that's where you're going. And then for a damage dealer perspective... You can either go someone like Opal. Uh, you can also go someone like Rosalind, who I just made the uh, video on. You can go Bachi, or you can even go Hori as well as your DPS. For this instance, we'll just show Bachi. And then this is the uh, slot that I think people have gotten a little bit upset about because for a while there, Grayson was what people needed to pass this dungeon along with one or two other niche people, which I'll talk to you about. Um, but Grayson actually in his trait has the ability to remove that crit rate buff uh, off of the boss. Uh, the reason that is important is because if this boss ends up doing crit damage, he ends up wiping your team. So you want to make sure that he does not get to the full crit. Um, which is right here. So he gains one stack of crit, crit rate up, and it's capped at four stacks. Uh, even at one stack of crit rate, uh, he can end up one-shotting your team. I don't know if that's possible at stage one or not. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. But Grayson was one of the people that, you know, you needed pre-nerf, um, at least to pass, like, stage four or at least complete stage four, but now it is doable with other people, which I'll talk to you about. Um, so we won't bring in Grayson. We'll bring in, uh, whoops. We'll bring in Blackhorn, and now that they have these leader uh, skills, uh, there's even more, you know, pluses to Blackhorn, who gives your team extra health, which is kind of cool. Like I said, Jonathan, this is for the AoE to keep your team healthy. Blackhorn's there for heals and the cleanse. Very, very important for that bomb. And then Hakron is there to give your team just sustain with the defense increase. And then he also gives your team max health boosts, which is really important for people like Jonathan uh, or Hakron, whoever is your highest HP character, to take that big single target hit. Um, and then there's other options here, okay? So, uh, some people use Flarence. Flarence is just an amazing character in general. She's able to give your team additional damage, like your damage dealer, uh, additional attacks. Uh, she also, on her uh, basic attack, removes buffs. So, the crit rate up buff is actually removable with Flarence. Uh, the other heroes that are now kind of viable for Stage 4 are people like Girinol. So Giranol, uh, for the longest time, has actually been uh, just an arena hero, but she does have no positive effects on her basic ability. So if you can keep no positive effects up on the boss, he will never get that crit rate up uh, buff on himself. So you are, you're able to go with a tanky comp. So uh, Giranol is one of those heroes. I know she's a legendary, but there is someone in the community uh, named Bacon who I've talked about in the past who has found that Hulans, which is a rare character, uh, sorry, elite character, has no positive effects on in his kit as well. Which is right... Oh, on his... Uh, oh, no, it's on his trait. Yeah. So if he's fully ascended, which he is an elite, so that should be able to work, um, all of his attacks will put up no positive effects. So... Pretty cool find, um, and he is able to beat stage four right now um, using Hulans as that kind of joint slot, right? 
So that's kind of neat. Uh, I will bring in... Uh, I guess I could probably bring in Grayson. Uh, that that won't really show you um, what's going on there. So I'll, I'll bring in Florence just so I can show you the uh, the crit rate up buff, right? And what you kind of need to watch out for. <laughs> so here, the boss starts at that 50%, like I said. We have all of our team in front of him because we don't want him to counterattack. Uh, whenever he puts that up for his turn. So what Florence does is, one, she gives your team heals. I have her in a faith set, so she's putting shield up on our team to make sure that we're even tank here. And then Hakrin comes in here, and he increases our health. Um, I told you this is a really important thing, you know, for someone like Jonathan to be able to uh, tank those max HP hits. Uh, his HP is obviously inflated right now because of that max health buff that uh, Hakron just put up. And then, remember, Blackhorn had um, his max HP leader skill, which was just introduced, which is cool. Um, that's how we got to this point. I think originally Jonathan's around 30,000 HP or something. So Jonathan is in here uh, basically to have these shields. And I'm sorry that I keep saying basically. I'm trying to stop doing that <laughs> he's in here to have the shields on your team uh as well <clears throat> as uh putting an attack down and defense down you will have to watch though mind you that if you're on if you're trying to auto this you're going to have to turn jonathan off because he does give himself a extra turn which will put him behind uh, the boss so don't do that but if you are just manualing, like I'm showing you here, he's a great option because he puts attack down and defense down on the boss, which is really cool. So Hakron, as I said, he's kind of a must for the tank comp right now, which goes back to the issue with these dungeons, is you need specific heroes. And uh, I just don't find that enjoyable. But on his second ability, he puts down this totem that allows you to remove a negative effect at the end of the turn. And that's where he comes in to remove the bombs. And then Rosalind is just our damage dealer. You know, he's at 50%, and she has a really nice kit, which I just went over. You should go watch her uh, character profile that I had. It details why she's really good for this dungeon, but... In short, she ignores certain parts of defense. Uh, she does multiple attacks. Uh, so just, she's a great character for this dungeon specifically. So she goes in there, and she's doing nice damage. And then all we're doing here is exactly this. We're just bringing in enough tank units with one damage dealer to be able to survive. Now, thankfully, I didn't see any crits there. But as you can see, this boss puts up that crit rate buff. So this gives him a stack, which gives him 25% crit rate. So he can get a max of 4. So he's uh, he'll crit 100% of the time, which is why people like Hulans or Giranol are really important with the no positive effects on their basic or their trait. But Florence also works here because uh, on her basic ability, she removes one positive effect, and you'll see that go away. So right there. So now we're back to being okay. And then we'll just put this on auto. As you see here, Jonathan is off. So he'll just go in and uh, do his basic abilities. And that's it. And then Hakron, Blackhorn, and Jonathan are all there just to support Florence. And they're there to support uh, Rosalind. So there you saw that big uh, max health nuke on Jonathan. He's in there to eat that up. To give yourself enough time to try and take down his HP before he eventually gets knocked out. Uh, and there's the bomb actually as well, which is why Blackhorn is in there to be able to cleanse that. But another thing that you need to pay attention to, and this happens in all of the other bosses as well, is these stacks will end up building. You can already see it's at times, times two. So he continually increases his attack so even more reason to try and kill him quickly you can't just come in here with a tank team and just slowly peck away with bleeds or um 
ignites or anything like that. You you really need to try and just do maximum damage with a DPS before that max health ends up killing that max HP single target nuke ends up killing Jonathan because then your team's going to die from the AOE abilities. So here, you know, we're kind of in trouble because now he's at 50% crit rate. So let's see what happens here. Let's see if he ends up nuking my team or not. And you'll see it in red if he crits. Okay, so, oh, there was a crit over here, but because we're on stage one, you know, our team's doing just fine. But then, thankfully, Flarence goes, removes those buffs, and then we're back, you know, in a really nice spot. And as you see here, this is looking pretty good. Uh, now here, you know, Jonathan and Hakron are booked as well as my DPS being fully booked. I think these heroes should be booked anyway for all parts of the game, but even if they aren't, Stage one, I think, is completely doable with unbooked characters and just really good gear. My team is having no issues surviving this. We could go a really, really long time, and I think your team could as well. But this is just a standard team comp, right? This is this is a tank team if you do not have heroes like uh, Shane or Zitlin. Now, the comp that I showed earlier in the day with Rosalind's hero spotlight was just a huge nuke team. And I'll show that here in a second after this runs over. And uh, I'll show you the other route. So <laughs> right now the community is, is just focused around Zitlin, Shane, Flarence comps, which I don't blame them. You know, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. It's just building DPS because, as I've mentioned, the mechanics of these dungeons just aren't fun. So you you just try and build comps that will get the job done quickly, get you your artifacts, and then you get on out of there. Auto teams are the best because you can put it in backstage and then you don't even have to watch this, you know? So uh, this is, you know, we're coming to an end. You see there that, like... The boss is doing 2,000 damage or 4,000 damage with his single target nuke. That's, like, hilarious because on stage four, it does, like, 20,000. <laughs> it just it scales so quickly. So that's it. This is the tank team. These are all of the mechanics that you're looking out for, that crit rate up for sure you want to avoid and then uh, want to be able to cleanse the bomb and then do enough damage. So pretty simple stuff resistance whatever so the other strategy that you can implement here um, sadly requires all of the meta heroes i don't make the rules so i just do stage three because again i don't really care um, <laughs> but you don't need any of those support heroes this is just a extremely fast go in Destroy this boss as quickly as you can with OP uh, support heroes. You got Zitlin, you got Shane, you got Flarence, and you just go in and you nuke. You use two damage dealers to get the boss below uh, 25% because that's all you need to do with Zitlin's curse ability, and then you get out of there, right? So that's what we do. Instead of... Uh, you know, putting something on auto and having it be a six-minute run, all I do is every once in a while I'll come in here and I'll do this for one minute and then I get out. So here, Flarence double attacks, increased damage taken. Shane is in there for uh, increased damage on... Uh, actually, he he's really not there for... <laughs> anything other than the defense down to and this increased damage from his trait. Zitlin's in there for the curse. Bocce's in there for another DPS to help out Rosalind. And then Rosalind is your big nuker who comes in here and just slaps slaps the boss here on stage three. And then Bocce does some cleaning up. And then we just put her on auto and uh, watch his life go down to... Less than 25%, and then we're out of there.
And that's it. Like, that's where we're at. Right now, until they introduce new heroes or do some kind of hero rework, this is all I've really got. I know that they've uh, put in a new Matrix hero that we were talking about that's going to help with this. But until then, I can't really test or want to build or book other heroes. And uh, this is what I'm doing with my time. So that's all I got for the fire boss. Like I said, a lot of similar mechanics to the earth and water, bar one or two things, and how I've been running it. So that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.